Such a love goes on, it has no end And when I'm down, your love makes me smile again It's deeper than the sea, high as a kite I feel it all around me like a glowing light So take me and shape me Your will be done in my heart today Oh, lead me so we see your kingdom come I want to shout it proud I want to dance and sing I'm gonna make it loud louder than everything so when this world is darker than the longest night your love would shine to me I'm gonna go gonna carry the light I'm gonna carry God, your love's more strong than all my fear. I'm standing proud and tall, knowing you are here. In every word I say and speak and write, I want your love to shine on through so clear and bright. So take me and shape me. You will be done in my heart today. Oh, lead me so we'd see your kingdom come I want to shout it proud I want to dance and sing I'm gonna make it loud louder than everything so when this world is darker than the longest night your love would shine to me I'm gonna go gonna carry the light Sunday service. It's great to have you here today. My name's Tamlin and I'm from St. Paul's. My name's Lucy and I'm from St. Melitis. Welcome to our beach hut for the summer. We're going to be doing summer family worship together over the summer holidays. Absolutely. We're really excited that you've joined us. So why don't you jump off your sofa right now and get ready to praise Jesus. Let's worship together. It's a topsy-turvy, curly, whirly, crazy kind of place Where the weak are strong, the first are last And the slowest one wins the race It's an upside down, an inside out Back to front kind of thing Because everything is possible In the presence of the king And when a mustard seed of faith Can move a mountain And two little loaves of bread Feed a thousand men when a small boy with his sling can knock a giant flat and a man can sleep inside a lion's den. It's a topsy turvy, curly, whirly, crazy kind of place where the weak are strong, the first are last, and the slowest one wins the race. It's an upside down and inside out, back to front kind of thing. Because everything is possible in the presence of the king And when the lame begin to dance And a blind man starts to see And a tankard full of water Becomes a vintage red When a faithful fisherman Can walk upon a lake And from his grave a man wakes from the dead Ew. It's a topsy-turvy, curly, whirly, crazy kind of place Where the weak are strong, the first are last And the slowest one wins the race It's an upside down and inside out Back to front kind of thing Because everything is possible In the presence of the king Now when the lame begin to dance And the blind man starts to see And a tankard full of water Becomes a vintage red When a faithful fisherman Could walk upon a lake But from his grave a man wakes from the dead hey. It's a topsy-turvy, curly, whirly, crazy kind of place Where the weak are strong, the first are last And the slowest one wins the race 
It's an upside down and inside out, back to front kind of thing. Because everything is possible in the presence of the King. God, you're amazing, the heavens declare Your glory and power, none can compare I look in wonder at all you have made Oceans and mountains speak of your name Creation shouts of you strong God you love me super strong God you made everything so beautiful God you're amazing the heavens declare your glory and power None can compare I look in wonder At all you have made Oceans and mountains Speak of your name Creation Shouts of you Super strong God You love me Super strong God, you made everything so beautiful. Super strong God, you love me. Super strong God, you made everything. So beautiful. Thank you, God, for protecting us and helping us fight the coronavirus. Amen. God, please help the people in need because they don't have a body healthy enough to fight the coronavirus. Amen. Jesus, we thank you that we can pray to you and we can worship you like this together. Amen. So guys, today we are going to be carrying on looking at our series on the miracles of Jesus. And we have Lucy Plum from St. Melitus. I'm sure a load of you are going to recognize her. And she is going to be looking at the story of Jairus's daughter. And that is an amazing story. So why don't you open your Bibles and have a look for the story and we'll hear from Lucy now. A ruler of the synagogue came to Jesus and bowed before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and touch her with your hand and she will live again. So Jesus stood up and went with the ruler. Jesus' followers went too. Then a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years came behind Jesus and touched the edge of his coat. She was thinking, if I can touch his coat, then I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw the woman. He said, be happy, dear woman. You are made well because you believed. And the woman was healed at once. Jesus continued along with the ruler and went to the ruler's house. Jesus saw people there who play music for funerals and he saw many people there were crying Jesus said go away this girl is not dead she is only asleep but the people laughed at Jesus after the crowd had been put outside Jesus went into the girl's room he took her hand and she stood up the news about this spread all around the area Everyone. My name's Lucy and it's nice to be with you this morning. So we've just heard with our fun little bits of paper the story of Jairus and his little girl and how God 
healed her. So let's think a bit more about that story. But before we get into the story, I just wondered, have you ever been in a situation where you've asked someone for help? I'm sure we all have, right? Maybe you've asked a grown up, maybe it was your mummy, your daddy or a friend. I remember once we were in a restaurant eating with my husband, Stu, um, who spoke a few weeks ago. And you know what? He fainted, which meant he just kind of went, oh, because he wasn't feeling very well in the middle of the restaurant. And I, he fell on the floor and I was like, ah, help. And I stood up and asked for help. And these lovely people came and rescued me and they called the ambulance and it was all good. And they looked after Stu and everything was okay. Sometimes we all need help, don't we? Or my little girl, we recently went to the climbing frame because we were excited that the playground's back open again. And she was on the monkey bars and then suddenly she was hanging and she was like, mummy, help. And I had to go and hold her and help get her down. We all need to ask for help for different things. But if you're not feeling very well, what do your parents do? If you have a tummy ache or a headache or something, what might your parents do? Maybe they'll give you some medicine, a bit like this, what I'm, I give my children. Maybe they might take you to the doctor and just the doctor check it out. Um, yeah, different things we do to make us feel better. But what if you were so sick? Imagine this is my little baby here. My baby was so sick that I thought it might die. Oh, that's just the worst, isn't it? What would I do? I'd probably phone the doctor, phone 999. The ambulance would come. They'd take the baby to hospital and try and make the baby better. But our stories today, they didn't have ambulances in hospitals. They couldn't use that. They needed a miracle for their little girl to get better. Now, the thing is about our story today, I'm just going to put my baby down because you know what? The little girl wasn't this little. Look, Abby's going to come and show me. Abby, this is how little, this is my little girl, Abby. So Abby's 11 and the girl in our story was 12. So this is to show you, this is the kind of age the little girl was in the story. So Abby's going to go to bed here like the little girl did. So you get comfortable, Abby, and we'll carry on with the story. I'm just going to get more comfortable as well. So who can remember the name of the man? The man's name was Jairus. Jairus was the daddy of the little girl and he was the ruler in the temple so he worked in the temple and he'd heard of Jesus he knew that Jesus had healed people and he was just really desperate he was like my little girl's gonna die so off he went he went all the way to find Jesus he's like Jesus help like I said earlier or like my little girl said help you've got to help me and off he went to right at Jesus's feet you've got to help me now my little girl is gonna die so Jesus said, I'll come with you. And off he went to go and help make the little girl better. And then Jesus got stopped on the way. And as they were on their way to the little girl's house, the little girl is ill. Suddenly the servants come and they're like, don't bother Jesus anymore. Your little girl has died. <gasps> it's a bit of a sad story, isn't it? But then Jesus says, it's okay have faith and believe and they go back to the house and they come and see the little girl and they get everyone out you know sometimes there's too many people in the room shoo 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 everyone get out jesus comes in he comes and sees the little girl and he takes the little girl's hand here and he says daughter get up and do you know what happens oh <gasps> not only does she sit up she stands up she's better she has come back to life this little girl not so little <laughs> hadn't just gone to sleep she wasn't just a little bit ill like when we have a bit of a cold or a snotty nose she had died and Jesus brought her back to life again how amazing is that Thank you. so what can we learn from this story today how can this help us know Jesus more I'll see what Jesus does well firstly Jairus the little girl's daddy loved his little girl so much that he went to Jesus. He was so desperate for his little girl to get better. He could have sent the servant, couldn't he? But he went himself to go and um, see Jesus because he just believed that Jesus was the answer. And he was so desperate for his little girl to be okay. Off he went. And to do that, he had to have something called faith. Now, I just want to show you an example of how we can understand what faith is now. So I just want to show you a little example of what faith is means okay so abby's gonna help me here let's say give it a wave okay. say hi right so i'm gonna blindfold you abby oh no <laughs> ah let's spin her a few times there we go so abby you can't see can you no no how many fingers am i holding up oh three no she definitely can't see can she guys huh. right so abby we're gonna stand you there <laughs> and you're gonna have to trust me 
to sit on the chair, okay? So I want you, I'm gonna stand you here, look, over here. Look, so here's the chair, guys. Watch out. Right, so Abby, you need to move to your right, one step. Brilliant, and I want you to take a small step back and move your right leg to the right a little bit. Brilliant, and I want you to sit down <gasps> she did it hooray so abby had had to have put all her faith in me because she couldn't see so that's how we can remember what faith is faith is believing when you can't actually see what's going to happen and that's how it is with jesus we've got to trust him even though we can't see what he's doing that he's going to guide us and we're not going to fall on the floor and miss the chair right let's continue with the talk there's a verse that's come up on the screen now saying, humanly speaking, it is impossible. Like little, little girl, Jairus's little girl, it was humanly impossible for her to come back to life. But with God, all things are possible. So maybe today you have something big. Maybe you're really worried about the coronavirus and we're just like, come on, Lord, we want a vaccine. Can we pray for that? We can trust God for what's going to happen. Or maybe it's something smaller and that's okay. God cares about the small things and the big things. Maybe you're like, Jesus, please, can you help my sister to stop bugging me every day? Or maybe it's just like, I'm really struggling with a friend right now and I really want to sort that out. God, can you help me? God cares and wants to hear about those things. So why don't we just pray now together? Dear Father, I thank you that you love every single one of us, that we are your children, that every single one of us right now listening, you care and help us to remember that all things are possible if only we believe and trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's been great to be with you today. Take care, bye. Hi everyone, it's that time again. It's time for this week's family challenge, woohoo! I'm not sure if you'll want to try this one at home. I mean, you can. So basically, Hannah here has three eggs. One will be for me, Lucy. One will be for Liv. Give us a shout, Liv. Woo! And one will be from Tamlin. Give us a Woo! shout, Tamlin, right? One of these eggs has not been cooked. Oh my so goodness. we're gonna go like that. And one of them is going to smash on our head, guys. And whoever's head it smashes on, you're the loser. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Basically. Are we ready? Maybe you should so, back a little bit so we're in okay. social distance. So, Hannah, do you want to give an egg to Tamlin? Oh, you can I choose. don't hold it. I'm just going to put it on the ground. Okay, put it on the ground and give an egg to Tamlin so there's no cheating. Oh, God. Right. Oh, and then give one to <laughs> Give one to <laughs> and one to mummy. <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> Hannah, you hold the microphone. You've got to count. Three, two, one, go. So everyone hold the egg out like that. Okay. Three. Stand back though, because otherwise that people at home can't see. Stay over here. Three, two, one. Oh! oh, oh that hurt me. That new freaking oh. is oh, that hurt my head. <laughs> oh, so oh, live and Lucy won. <laughs> Well, guys, that was certainly interesting, getting an egg on my face. I don't recommend you try that one at home. But anyway, guys, we'd love to see you this week at our summer fun workshops happening on Wednesday at noon. And this week, we're going to be looking at crafting and doing some different crafts. So make sure you tune in on Facebook or YouTube. Okay, bye, guys. Hope to see you then. And make sure you stay tuned for our craft. Bye.